Have you ever gotten close to a member of the Nightmare Court? No, thank Vantari. Have you? Once. I almost wilted. She seemed so alien. It was like she existed in a shadow world. I feel disconnected here in a swamp. I know. We're so far from the grove. I miss the pale tree. Perhaps we should spend some time in the grove. Reconnect with our roots. This story began with a human soldier named Ronan, whom, while separated from his patrol, discovered a cavern filled with strange seed pods. This cavern was protected by terrible plant creatures, so he fled, clinging to a single seed to show his daughter when he returned home from war. But upon his arrival, Ronan discovered the Massat had destroyed his village and murdered his family, leaving only ruined houses and mass graves. In agony, he planted the seed on their graves and swore never to return to battle. All right. Thank you for saving me. Wait, what? Why are you saying thank you for saving me? That's strange. Are they left? I didn't press F on you there. They just walked off. We need to get across here. With the proper ingredients, I could grow a new bridge. Maybe, uh, maybe, um, Kate did it or something behind her back. Right, so that is the next room over there. And you can actually see that there's another champion of foul lanes there. Brangal. Brangwa, whose name you won't recognize. I guess we'll talk more about him uh, later. But yeah, Kate needs to build a bridge. We can't actually get up there. Um, so... Uh, we saw her do this right at the start of the game in the dream, but I guess she needs ingredients. So she says, if I had some seeds, water, and just a bit of fertilizer, I could regrow this bridge so we could continue. Tell me about the seeds. There must be some extra seeds around here. They would be stored somewhere safe, probably someplace out of the way where creatures can't get at them. Uh, tell me about water. Not just any water will do. I'll need purified spring water to make the seeds grow true. I saw a basket on the island we passed earlier. Maybe it contained some vials left behind by the Nightmare Court. And lastly, tell me about fertilizer. Well, we're unlikely to find fertilizer around here. However, we could use fish oil instead. Of course, we'd need to kill a lot of fish to get enough oil, or perhaps just one really big one. I like the thought there that maybe the devs, when they were designing this, thought that that would be a choice for the players. Um, right, so yeah, we get kind of this cool like crafting scenario moment. I do enjoy this. There's another spell blossom up there. Let's take that out before it kills too many of our minions. Then, oh, I thought it was an axe. My bad. Uh, the nice thing here is we can keep building shrouds. So what we're going to do is um, go collect each item. Now, Kate gives a vague clue as to where the things are. But as always with RPGs in the late 2010s, they're not content to let you immersively figure things out. They have to put waypoints everywhere. So the game will just tell you. Just wander towards the glowing objective and you'll be fine. So over here, this is going to be the spring water. There are lots of puppies here. Now, I deliberately didn't kill these yet because most of them you can insta-kill. Uh, there's only two actually dangerous hounds. And uh, they're the ones we're going to focus on in the fight. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I actually thought I wouldn't have to cut this at all. But they might take a while to take out. So whatever. I'll see you guys in a sec. One thing I would like to note and point out is uh, in terms of build craft and gameplay style, just how distinctly different this is to, say, Bract in Cordicus's manner. Uh, when I've described over and over again Necro as attrissive, I hope now you see what I mean. There's not really that many convincing ways to build like a really spiky, glassy necro that has to kite around constantly to achieve its ends. Uh, we kind of have to push ourselves into this tanky, attrissive playstyle and grind things through. Uh, Bract, on the other hand, is very like heat of the moment, live or die kind of gameplay with the way that we had him built. And that's two very different facets of gameplay that Guild Wars offers, just depending on what class you pick and how you decide to play. And I think that's to the game's strength, by the way. I, d I think it's nice that both exist. Uh, but this is a very, very different style of thing. You know, Brack could never have face tanked any of this, but he would have killed quicker. He just would have had to have been running around and using terrain and stuff. So yeah, I, I think that, that's, that highlights something cool. Anyway, here, look, would you like to collect a vial of spring, uh, sorry, clear spring water? We can take some water. And you see, it actually goes into our inventory here. Crystal clear water. Perfect for growing Silvari architecture. Funny story about these items. Fast as the wind. If you want, I believe that they are actually trading postable. As in, they go on the global player market. 
So players can actually come into this dungeon in story, specifically to this bit, gather the items and sell them to other players. The thing is, there's not much of a market for that because people don't really play the story instance that much. And it's not that hard to just kill a couple of wolves and do it. But you can do that if you like. So if you want to go through really quickly, you could just go to the marketplace, pop a, uh, a trading post and come in prepared. Um, but yeah. All right. So here's another one of the items. Down it goes. Uh, so what do we got here? Rummaging through this basket, you find a bundle of seeds. We can take the seeds, and again, look, you get the seeds. A package of seeds used by the Silvari to grow their plant-like architecture. So the Nightmare Court do the same. Um, all right, and then lastly, we got to get the fish oil. So we're going to swim into this lake. Uh, I guess we'll just descend straight away. There will be barracuda and things. Remember, with our spear, we can now spin. We can do the autos, and we can give ourselves shrimp, literal shrimp. Uh, and so we've just got the four and the five to discuss. So, the skill four is called Deadly Catch. Whirl around, throwing spears around that cripple foes and pull them to... And by the way, these shrimp all life steal now, right? We get extra packet. We, we double up or even triple up whenever a shrimp strikes, which is why you see there's just mess of, of crazy white numbers. So yeah, whirl around um, and pull a ton of mobs. So, if I want to go fishing for these barracuda, I can do this. And pull them to me, like so. Um, kind of nice. The cripple's all right. The well's all right. Not the greatest thing in the world. And then finally, the skill five. Remember, the skill fives are usually the really powerful ones. This is called Dark Spear. Throw your spear and shadow step to the first target it hits, delivering a rending strike in the area around you. So, swimming down, you can see there's a big fish. A really big fish. A mutated fish. Uh, and we can engage on it in a big way. Now, I kind of want an elite skill for underwater. But what the hell would we pick? Uh, I guess we could... Oh, I guess we'll leave it for now. I guess we'll leave it for now. Because the flesh golem doesn't work underwater. Which is a bit weird. And I would have I would have thought that in the underwater overhaul they would have given you that. But oh well. Uh, okay, so the fish. We're going to open up by teleporting to him. And then doing a big hit of damage. This is a huge, huge pond by the way. You can swim really far down. It's kind of amazing with all the steam and stuff. But there's not really any reason to. It's just wherever the fish swims. You want to make sure you find him there. That's cool. I guess that's the underside of a waterfall there. Right. And the fish is about a million miles away. Okay, so here we go. The mutated fish. Throw the spear. In we go. And let's do it. So, just like any big champion boss, he does have a break bar. Our job is to break that quickly because we do not want... So, the four isn't worth you. I'm not very good at Necromancer underwater, just to be clear, in Shroud because I don't really understand very well. You notice his Shroud recharges really quickly here. So... I wonder how well we can do. The thing is, he's going to do a lot of damage to us. Like, a lot of damage. He's going to kill our minions really quick. Luckily, we get, seem to get Shroud quite quick. But Shroud's not that good underwater. I don't know. Not unless he's putting conditions on us, which he's not really. Let's kill that Barracuda. I don't want to fight the boss and the Barracuda at once. Barracuda spawn, always spawn more Barracuda, so you want to deal with them quite quickly. He's very tanky. I guess this just, this just depends. Can we get our minions back before he kills them all? Uh, and maybe the trident is better, actually. Maybe the trident's better. So let's summon our grave on him. Oh, I might have even missed that. Brilliant. Uh, let's just see. We're regenerating health fast enough that it might be okay. I'll see you guys in a sec. Oh, that felt really good. That felt really meaty. I'm getting the flow of underwater. You've gathered the ingredients. I can do the enchantment. All right, Kate. The Asura love their little golems, but I prefer a more natural this should do the trick. Let's go. Wow, Kaith. P being mean about the Asura. I'm getting really good at underwater here. Oh, look at that school of fish. That looks so cool. This reminds me very oddly of Super Mario 64 there. One of the levels where you go into, like, the giant aquarium or whatever. Jesus. Um, yeah, I, I even got used to, like, tapping in and out of Shroud. What's this tunnel over there? That place looks cool. I even got... I kind of want to swim down it and see where it leads. Hold on, hold on. I just want to come over here and see. Actually, the surface is here. Oh, I'm a fool. It just, it's its not a tunnel. It's just, there's a, like, basically a little island out in the depths of despair. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, uh, I even got used to dipping into Shroud and then leaving again just to pulse the last rites protection. Um, sorry, the Beyond the Veil protection onto us. Uh, it was really kind of fan uh, fantastic. Okay, so, uh, Kaith has built the bridge. Or, yeah, oh, we've missed the animation. That's a shame. It's a shame we didn't get to turn it in. And we get Foulane's second champion, Rangwa. 
Now, Brangwa is the only champion in this dungeon, I think, that we've never met before, never had any lore. Help. They do terrible things to me. Yeah, just like all the rest. You keep it down now. I mean, the funny thing is, if you gamble right, then this could help you in the, the dungeon. Uh, I'm going to blow up. Oh, never mind. I thought I only had one minion left, so I was going to double blow that up. This guy is the only of the champions that we is just totally alien to us. We don't know who this is. They've been a member of the court for so long. We just we have no real clue. So let's go on in and uh, see what Kay thinks. <laughs> You've done well against poor little Sariel, my pet. How will you fare against Sir Brainguar, Knight of the Court? I am not some rat in your maze. We were entwined. I sense fear in her, Lady Fowlin. How delightful. But can she harness it? Are you sure she is worthy? Feel free to test her mettle. She'll be up to the challenge. Have at her, Sir Brainguar. So what is Kate doing there? He feared us all, but uh, immediately we ripped it because of the, the minions. So thank you there, minions. Uh, it probably means one of our minions got feared really far away. Uh, so yeah, what is Kate doing? So, oh my god. Okay. Oh god, god, god. I forgot about the mechanics here. Yeah, he creates these living nightmares, these phantasms that like rot in our heads and do lots of damage. This is a very mesmery thing. And we have to be really careful of this. Kate's already down. I don't know, guys. Uh-oh. 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 Uh I don't know. That one looks like a freaking flesh golem as well. I have to pull back. I have to. And I have to hide in Shroud. Now, we do get life force each time one of these dies, which is really good. It lets us stay in Shroud. For I think we do anyway. God, there's even more. Uh-oh. Wow, this is crazy. I don't remember it being this bad. These bosses are going to get really nasty as we go forward. Our minions are dead. We have to keep backing up. He keeps summoning more. He must stop eventually, right? Surely, eventually, he stops. He took quite a lot of damage. With Kate dead. Oh, God, I don't know. Yeah, I wonder what Foulane's doing. It, does she really care about Kate? I mean, she clearly respects Kate's fighting abilities. Is she just deliberately throwing her champions away? Like, is that what she did with, with uh, Sarah? Like, these two spent so much time together. They should know how dangerous one another are. This is pretty bad, question mark? I'm not sure. What, like, is Brangwa going to come all the way back here? Certainly his minions are. Should we go back into the room? This is the thing. It's death if we go back into the room at the wrong time. I don't know why he's summoning so much stuff. This is so bad. This didn't happen on my test. We have to pull back still, even further still. Okay, I think Brangwa's ran back in. Okay, so Kate has rezzed now. So what, 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 what's happened here is that there's a mechanic when an ally of yours dies, like Kate did in the room. Uh, in this game, if you run far enough away from the body, the game detects that they're dead and you're really far away. So there you see Kate died again. Uh, so what, what the game will do is it will do something, the community called snapping, which is where Kate will, her body will revive and be teleported to our feet. I'm not broken. Basically. Uh, and so in that, we only have two minions up right now. There, I fully broke combat. And so what we can do is snap Kate by coming all the way over here, revive her and get her that, like that out of the room. And now she's alive and she becomes invulnerable at the same time. And and with that, we can maybe reset the fight. If I can get back in before Brangwire fully starts death. healing from being out of combat, this will be perfect. But we have to go quick. Okay, perfect. So now we've got Kate back up. we got our cooldowns back. we got full shrouds. I'm a little bit more confident going in. And uh, we can drop our blinds and see what we got. And maybe get some more damage on him. What a tricky fight. This is really crazy. Uh, he feared us. That was bad. I should have dodge rolled that, but I didn't. <clears throat> got to watch that animation. More shrouds just to cleave them down. We got to watch for that next well. If I break his break bar, he won't be able to cast them anymore. And they might even disappear after a while. I hope anyway. Still getting pretty hurt. There's no point going to Axe right now because we already have full Shroud. So here I'm going to go Well of Darkness to cover blinds while I auto attack to get my health back. Then when the Well runs out, our health's going to go down. And then I'll go into Shroud to bring that back up. Uh, and we'll go for some break bar damage soon again, I think, in a second. All right, we're starting to sustain it just about-ish. Those fears are really nasty, though. Okay, that down. Okay, minions. Uh, we only have one minion left. It's our fiend. But his break bar's about to go down. So... 
we might be able to sustain. Okay, blinds again. It's a while before they fully recharge. Oh, God, the fear. That's scary. Let's get that up. I mean, there's so many enemies. We do pretty good outnumbered. All right, we're getting the res again. I think... I mean, it's just if everything dies and all the targets come to us, there's Kaith gone down again. She's kind of a minion in a weird way. Uh, they will spike us really hard like you saw at the start of the fight. My flesh golem can break the bar there by charging through. Oh, my God, he died. The golem died. Fuck. Protected. All right, 8%. We're getting close. I think we'll be fine. I think at this point we'll be okay. Fast as the wind. Only the blood fiend up again. Break. Torment. Few autos. We got this, guys. Two percent, one percent. Woo! Oh! That I believe is the ultimate difference between us. Valen tests others to examine her own character. I only ever test myself. That's a weird thing. I mean, not much else of the story ever really touches on that, but that's Kate's thinking right now. I weep for Brangwire's fate, but I am all the more incensed by the corruption of the Nightmare Court. Did you know him? We fought together long ago, she says. Once he was a hero, but Foulane and the court have turned him into a creature of fear and terror. That's not in the novels. That's not in any flashback we will ever get in the game. I don't know when or what, how that happened. But that's a chapter of Kate's life we don't see. All right, so what we got? A coat, a pouch, and a ragged thing, and the grand chest for our scary boss fight. We get a bag of coins, a scepter, and a short bow. Now, the bags of coins give us plenty of silver and things, so that's nice. Uh, all our minions were dead by the end of that. All of them. If I was really good at the game, by the way, I would see right before one of the regular minions dies and we could explode them instead. And I would see right before my fiend dies and I would sacrifice him instead. But uh, I'm not that good at the game. I'm not good Please at the help me. All right. No, we're not going to help you. Okay, another uh, route here. We've got a ton of nightmare pups. Only one dangerous one. So we're going to take our target on him. So, another mechanic with the game for all the new players. I'm going to give you everything you need to know, all right? So, here's another thing. Most skills in Guild Wars 2 are five target max. So, here we just engage on like eight or nine, well, seven or eight different pups, right? So, if I use like my axe three, which of the five, which five of the eight does it hit? Well, you don't know. It randomizes. But the one thing that you can guarantee is it will guaranteed hit whoever you're targeting. So when I engaged on that group, I made sure to be 100% sure to target the main hound, the, the actually dangerous one. Because that ensures all of my AoE stuff will hit him definitely. And then the other four packets of damage will be random. When I do like Axe 3 or when I do Transfusion and all of that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? So whenever you see that, always take target on the main thing because it is more important than just where your skills land. If there's tons of targets, it will guarantee you hit the one you really want. That's useful in PvP as well and stuff when you want to guarantee you're cleaving like a body with a, with a, ta with a skill that only hits three targets. But there's lots crowded around it or whatever. Okay, so... Leave me here. Oh my god, spiders spawned over there. I was uh, I only vaguely walked in this direction because that, that's another explorable path gate, which we won't actually go in here. That will take us to more hidden areas. Um, and I guess the, the devs have got spiders that spawn from walking out of your road. This is such a Guild Wars 1E video, guys. This is so weird. This is just like what it was, what it was like recording the first game. Random mobs spawning in areas and then I'll speed up the fight to kill them and then we'll walk forward. Oh, it's so strange. It's still alive in Guild Wars. It's just in odd places. Uh-oh. This is really bad right now. We're going to have to sacrifice our thing. Oh, God. The hounds are scary as hell. All right. Let's get our well. No, Kaith died. Kaith, I was relying on you staying alive for a second there. We got to get a kill because... There you go. Because otherwise, we're not guaranteed to ever get the thing. So the next time we re-engage. So now that we've got at least one kill, we can slowly back up. And try and remass. This is hard. These hounds that do not mess around. Luckily, our heal skill is on, a, on an obscenely low cooldown. So, as long as we sacrifice the fiend, we can get back. Okay, I think we're fine. The game was really smart about when it used combat music there as well. It was when I was low on health and I got kicked out of Shroud while knocked down. The game kicked in the combat music. It was really smart. All right, we got it though. We just about won. We got a good reward from this fight as well. My god. Uh, what is this? Banded pauldrons and a thorn sack. Nice. 
All right, Kaith, up you get. I mean, uh, now that I've described to you the idea of snapping, what you, what you should see is I could just leave her dead and walk ahead and she would snap to my location. And now you might understand why that mechanic exists. Because in Guild Wars 1, a key ally could die somewhere and you'd wander away and only at- Help! They do terrible things to me! Yes, I understand. And only at the end of the instance would you realize, oh, snap. I've got to go revive my friend, and you'd have to come all the way back. All right, so Foul Lane's third champion. This is, uh, in some ways, my favorite challenge champion. In some ways, my most hated. They're right around this corner. First, some sorcerers. Two sorcerers, so lots of fear. We've got to be cautious on this. Whew. You know, fighting two of those at once with all the fears reminds me. When the game first came out... Um, there were all these... I remember playing this with friends and there was so much fears. It was, It felt like it was terribly designed or whatever. It was like, oh, this is just horrible. This is so boring. I'm running into walls all the time. But it's only later that I kind of realized, you know, the point is you need a lot more than just damage to get through this stuff. You either need lots of stability to be able to... Uh, shake off all the fear or resistance to shake off the fear or you need to load up lots of your own cc's and blinds and things you need to understand the strengths of those things and then it makes you know you can even solo fights like that where at launch you'd have five players just running into walls constantly until they all die you know do you have wisdom to say uh we already spoke to you kate i don't know why i felt so here we go let's come around the corner this cool cool room by the way i love this room we're in the hall of hearts remorse and what do we see cadian <laughs> So, the firstborn continues her futile quest. <laughs> Face the truth, dear heart. The dream is a nightmare. See the world for what it is. Episodes of pain ending in untimely death. Our paths diverged long ago. I chose the dream of our people. You, a twisted phantasm. The love I once knew has died. I won't let you continue like this. You will regret speaking to the mistress that way. Cadian, seek your revenge against the firstborn. All right, we, we need to run back here uh, just for a second before I start the fight. Okay. Um, so uh, there's lots to talk about. I guess there's a before fight and then there's an after fight. Let's do the before fight first. Cat foul ain't there saying take your revenge against the firstborn. We all understand what she's talking about there. He hated that the tree only spoke to the firstborn and not the secondborn. Kate basically bluntly said that to him in the past. Does she have different dialogue during the fight? Do you have wisdom? No, she doesn't. So, um, so that's very cool. Now here is Cadian. What you might find really interesting and curious is in the short stories about Cadian. We kind of heard he seemed, it very much seems to be set up from that short story. He founded the Nightmare Court. He created, he was on the throne, remember? And he's speaking to people. Seems like he sort of is the architect of all of this. So he is like such a vastly, hugely important character. And there's a chapter of this story we don't know right now. And that is, okay, if he founded the Nightmare Court, if he created it, how is Foul Lane now the leader? What, what happened that meant he gave up his leadership role over to her as the firstborn? And I believe there have, this question has been posed to devs before in four there might be interviews. People might even link it in the comments. Um, I don't really remember exactly what they say in those. But to be honest, the only real law is the law that's in the game. And that is a, a beat of the story that's kind of skipped. Uh, by the time we find Cadian here, it's Foul Lane that's sort of trumped him. I mean, that would feel so horrible for him as well. He founds the Nightmare Core. He doesn't like the thing about the Firstborn. And then it seems so weird that he would give it up to a Firstborn, you know? But here he is listening, bowing down to her. So what happened there exactly that led to Foul Lane um, taking charge over all of that? Uh, from where we saw him in the short story f through until now. And he is indeed one of the champions. So let's get in and fight him. And um, we can see what he does. There it is immediately. Uh, he has a spell that means we become his ally, essentially. And we turn into creatures. So, he turned me into a tabby cat. Cruel transformation, you are a cat. And I get cat abilities. I can slash, I can bite, I can maul, I can pounce, I can snarl. That's it. That's what he does. The only way to stop being a cat is to kill the nightmare pup that spawns when you transform. So, you can't fight him, but you can fight the pup that's there. So, he has this animation, as you just saw it there. He's 
jumps in the air, he spirals around, and he uh, and he transforms people near him. He won't transform summons and minions, such as um, my my minions, and he won't start, he won't transform Kate. But any players, he will. It's very similar actually to Guild Wars One, the Shiro fight, the end of factions, really. In the only player entities can be teleported or, or, or moved in any way. So if we just stand back here, we will never be teleported. But I'll come in and I'll show you it again. We could also break his break bar and stuff. Aside from that, he's a Mesmer. He reflects projectiles. You actually saw him reflect my Deathly Swarm a second ago. Like, if I cast Deathly Swarm now, he'll reflect it back to me and confuse me. Um, let's see him do the animation again. Um, while we're alive, we can't kill the pups. So, your friends can't kill the pups while you are transformed. Only you can kill a pup to bring yourself back to normal. There it is again. Oh, I think it missed. I think he targeted something else. I'm glad we got it once. So there's several different transforms you can become. I think you can become like a mower. Uh, what else can you become? Maybe you can become a spider. There's a few, and you get different abilities each time. It's kind of a fun Protected. idea, but the problem with Cadian is aside from that, he has no real damage. So uh, it's an interesting thing, and uh, I like what the devs were going with, but... Unfortunately, as a boss, he, he kind of isn't that fun after this. But this is like such a profound, prominent thing to me. I remember when I first played this. We are fight, we are killing, defeating Cadian here now. These champions have been dying. We may not have cared too much about Serial. We may not have cared about the other guy a second ago. But Cadian, uh, this is how like important and crazy this is. This is the founder of the Nightmare Core, or so it would seem. And uh, we're freaking just mauling him. He only transformed us once as well. Wow. Uh, this is crazy. He's not gonna do it a single other time. Fine. I knew our paths led to only one place, and still I hesitated. Now I am certain. Fowlin sent her followers to test me, serving them up as bait for her trap. But she is a spider caught in her own web. It is time. That's how evil and crazy Fowlin is. She served up Cadian in the trap. So <clears throat> now I said as we came into this room, I kind of love and hate this. When I first played the game, I was immensely disappointed that the only place Cadian ever appeared in the Guild Wars 2 story was here, where he says almost nothing, and he's just a random boss that we kill, and then we move on. I mean, it really, it puts a lot of emphasis onto Foulane, which is super cool as a villain. I'm still not sure whether I like this that much. I guess to be Devil's Advocate and show the good side of it, it's kind of, there's this real poetic thing there where it's like, what did Cadian say? He, w he, he swore to the mother as he left the grave. He had ambitions and he swore to the mother. He said, I will never be one among many. And he leaves. And what happens? He's one among many. He's not one among many in the, oh, he's just a random boss in a dungeon, though that's true. But even quite deliberately story-wise, he's just one champion among many of Fallon. He, just, he, he went from being a pawn, as he saw it, of the avatar of the tree and the tablet to being a pawn of Fowlane's. And he was just cut down. Like, he was just killed. That's it. That's, that, that's it. That is Cadian done. Cadian is one of the coolest, most interesting characters in this entire franchise to me. And so I will leave it to you guys in the comments and your own minds to see what you think about what the devs did here with him. Please help me. But that's uh, that's the Cadian story. Uh, I'm very glad that we got to experience it and uh, that you know who that is as we come here in the dungeon. Because for most players who weren't lore enthusiasts, they would have had no idea who he was anyway. But there you have it. Uh, you get a lot of meaning out of this room, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I also think it's a goddamn beautiful room, just by the way. Okay, uh, moving on. Kate, she says, Cadian, may the crows feast on his heart. Who was Cadian? Cadian was one of the second born. He fought Foulane fully in. Uh, he brought Foulane fully into the Nightmare Court, and she replaced him as their leader. I've not seen you this agitated. Can I ask you something else? Are you alright, Kaith? This place makes my heart sick. Foulane has her mentor and her student and her court. What do I have? Man, that's really sad. <laughs> she is alone. We say you are not alone. Let us end this madness. We're with her, but everyone's abandoned her. She's actually so alone. Everyone's abandoned her. There's one person in all of Tyria who is uh, crying out for her company. One person. And it's Foulane. Okay, we're getting very near to the end now, guys. We've got one more encounter now. In the nursery. Such perversions of nature, they should not exist in the waking world. So, the Nightmare Court have been doing some interesting things, exploring themselves, the Silvari, what they can do, what they can manufacture. And here we find a giant husk. 
Kill, uh, so our objective is to kill the Volatile Nightmares and use their essence to weaken the Unstable Husk. So, Foul Lane is behind that door, but there's a big monster there. This guy is probably the biggest thing we've seen in the game so far. You know that giant we saw that was shrunk down in Harathi? Giants are probably about as big as this, maybe slightly smaller. This is, this is huge, though. This is a big, big creature. And if we try to target him... You'll see he's determined to survive and immune to damage. He's at 100% health. So how do we get through him? Now, if we walk up to him... I'm kind of scared. Oh, he does do stuff. He does do stuff. I don't want to go anywhere near him. Basically, we... we uh... Oh, by the way, life still does go through in Vuln. So there's some weird ways you can break the game. So my guy's doing like 40 damage there. If I wait like 10 hours at that gate, eventually my minions will kill him. Um, but I don't know. That would probably bug it or something somehow. Uh, yeah, we don't want to go near him. He does damage. He might even instantly kill us, and I want to keep my charges of bloodlust and summoning. So, uh, what do we do? Well, now we do have to go to the pods, and we open them up. And you'll notice that coming out of them are these elite volatile nightmares now. So these are not your regular Silvari. They're, they're wielding whips, or not regular nightmare court, I guess. They're, they're, that we found in the dungeon anyway. These guys are applying whips and things. They're fast. They apply bleeds. The flavor text says. But when we kill them, uh, you will see that they drop nightmare essence. And what we can do with the nightmare essence is we can target the guy, throw it at him from 1200 range, and it conjures a storm that freaks him out. And shrinks him down, as you can see there, just a little bit. Shrinks him down. So, uh, that's our objective here. To collect four of those to shrink him as much as possible. Now, over here, I think there's a big spawn of spiders. There is, yes. So, we're going to take these out. I'm scared my minions are going to keep fighting the boss over there instead of helping me versus the spiders, which is kind of terrifying. Uh, so, we're going to be careful of that. But that's the room. It's just open pods. And you guys know what the combat's like here, so I'm, I'm mostly going to speed this entire section up. I'll see you all in just a moment. I'm fast as the wind. Oh, there it is. Oh, my God. I can't believe it happened. Oh, guys, guys, guys. We just got our 25th stack. I was going to wait. I thought this was going to work perfectly. We'd get at the end of killing her. So there you go. Look, we summoned our Flesh Reaver. So, uh, we get another minion. This guy is not going to last permanently. In fact, he's going to die after like a minute or so. So, it's a bit unfortunate that we don't get him forever. But that's our Flesh Reaver. I kind of wanted him in the last fight. But, uh, yeah, that's what we've been charging up. We would have had multiple Flesh Reavers. Except that the underwater aspects of the dungeon have, um, have eliminated our stacks each time. Which is a real, real sadness. But there he is. Uh, at least we get to see him. And forever now, as we play Caraflower, I see no reason why we can't keep the Flesh Reaver. Uh, and so, yeah, now that we've thrown all the essence on the husk, he is now vulnerable as a mob. And we can use the Flesh Reaver to fight the penultimate boss of the game. Uh, he does lots of CCs of his own if you stand close to him. But once we break his bar, we should be able to push in and do plenty of damage. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of another minion for us. So it's pretty nice. Down he goes. There he is. Uh, but yeah, so that's another guy you can just get kind of as a freebie from Sigils. And in open world, where you kill a lot more frequently and a lot quicker, you'd find that the pace of them coming out is a lot faster as well. Um, Protected. Wow, we keep getting knocked back. We keep getting slapped by this husk. Uh, generally, he's tanky. All he does is knockbacks. So we don't have to worry too much. We've just got to kill him. Oh my god, so here you can see <laughs> what Necro is weak with. You don't get much in the way of s keeping stable and stability, so... Especially when it comes to a boss that you can't actually technically blind, it's uh, a bit grace. Okay, um, she. so with that done, case update, uh, last bit of dialogue, easy to miss because there's only a very small walk to the end of the dungeon here. She says, I cannot imagine the horrors Foul Lane is capable of. I don't know if I can go on. And we say, should we go back for Logan and Ritlock? Wow, they're pretty far. Uh, and she says, they've abandoned me. Everyone fails. Everyone falls into darkness. You can handle this. You know what you have to do. And she says, I know. I just cannot bear the madness of this place. I feel better. Thank you. Does she really feel better? Does she really? I mean, she goes for a pretty brutal one. She's not the only member of Destiny's Edge that goes for a pretty brutal time as well. One of the other characters is pretty much in for it. Uh, okay, so. The grand chest. Uh, let's open it up. 
We could. There was that last corrupted pod over there, but screw it. And uh, this is it, guys. Foul Lane's Lair. Which you'll actually notice, the entrance to the dungeon is here. We're, we're coming up to that ledge. We've, like, looped back to where we were. So what's going on, Foul Lane? There she is. Uh, now, I will just say, as a pre at No, it's fine. We, we can go in. All right. Let's do it. I'm nervous. This is a hard fight. This is the hardest fight in the dungeon. Here at last, dear heart. <laughs> Are you prepared to join me? I will never be with you. Not even to be with your friends. Well, they've already made their choice. Join us, Keith. This is the only rational choice. We can all be together again. Fowlin has brought us together. Be with us. Everyone stands against me. I have no one left. This can't be real. Ritlock and Logan can't stomach each other. Real or not, we have to deal with them. Okay. Running away, running away, running away, running away, running away, running away, running away. Please, nobody aggro. Crap, Case ran in. Jesus Christ. Okay, so the final fight, the final boss, is uh, fighting Destiny's Edge. A ghostly, phantasmal, terrible version of Destiny's Edge that Foul Lane has conjured for us. So some of them are really squishy, some of them are not. Foul Lane herself will be a component of this fight. Uh, so what you want to do is focus on the squishy ones. So Zodja is an elementalist. We want to take her out. Zodja's golem, Mr. Sparkles, was also here. Um, you notice we ran out of Shroud very quickly there. That's because this is a very difficult fight. There's a lot of pressure. I'm going to put my blinds down again. These guys are only actually technically elites. So they will be properly blinded and suffer the effects of cripple and stuff. Um, so the golem we already killed. We have uh, a wolf called Garm to fight as well. Yes, Air is a ranger. We don't know much about her. She's the leader. She's a ranger. She had a wolf. We've already killed that as well. Uh, and once we get Zodja down, I'm mostly okay. Ritlock and Zo uh, and Logan are pretty goddamn scary, though. So we'll have to be careful. I think Air will be my next target as well, because she has lots of ranged pressure. Um, and knockback as well, which is scary. I'm going to keep kiting around this tree in the middle. How can you destroy such genius? But then, you never did take me seriously. Uh, so Zodja's down, and you just saw Foul Lane there in the middle of the room. Uh, the tree in the middle, the devs actually updated after launch that air can shoot through and stuff because players were sort of uh, uh, tricking the instance, basically. Uh, so don't you don't think of it as I'm actually using it for safety. I'm just running in circles, really. Uh, yes, Foul Lane is down as well. Now, we get dialogue for every kill we make, so I want to spread out the kills so you guys can hear them properly. Let's hope that air goes down quite comfortably now. Um, I'll daze them all just to slow things down. And Foul Lane's here as well. Well, I've been gravely injured. Shit, Kate's down. That's not good. Kate going down. I can't easily res. So my failure is complete. So we missed a little bit of what she said there. Um, not enough energy. Oh God, hold on. Foul Lane's resing again. Oh my god, hold on. Zodja just got back. Is that because Foul Lane rezzed her? I'm yeah, look, 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 look. Foul Lane rezzes. I forgot about this mechanic. No. Okay, what we got to do is take out Foul Lane. Oh my god, so many mechanics have appeared here that didn't in my test. Okay, this is screwed now. So what we have to do is is, is flee. We have to flee this fight and then we have to snap Kaith and try again. Because we've lost all of our momentum now and I will die if I stay in there because Foul Lane's going to res again and everything. So Kate is back. She's already charging in. We're going to come back here. Right. Also, since these aren't technically Nightmare Court, I'm going to swap to the Sharpening Stones here. We're going to deposit our stuff. All right, round two. Round two. That's not technically losing there. So, yes, when one of Destiny's Edge dies, Foul Lane will res them. Look, Mr. Sparkles is down again. So that's fine. My god, the Kaith is so bloodthirsty. So we'll try again. I'm actually gonna go for air. Ow. Okay, see what I see what I mean? See what I mean, guys? Some of them really hurt. I think we just got shotgunned by air. She didn't like the fact that I was gonna go for her. We need to regenerate through blood, but I don't know whether we can. I'm gonna sacrifice my fiend. I really am. Because we can resummon him in a few seconds and we just need the time. So what we got to watch for is try to not use too much of our crowd control. Uh, Ritlock, I don't really want to be my target. And we want to use it on Foul Lane when she comes down. Ah, uh, this isn't good. I'm going to die again. It's too much damage. It's too much damage. I'm going to die. I'm actually going to fully die. 
Zodja shooting us there is a freaking Ellie. Oh, no, this is really hard. This is so hard right now. Uh, see, in my tests, I blew them all up so quickly that uh, they had no... Ch like, Fowling didn't have enough of a chance. Okay. Okay, we have a bit of a problem with Kaith in that she's not healing in any way. Does she have mid-boss fight dialogue? With you. No, she doesn't. Uh, oh, there you go. She, she's healing now. She wasn't able to break combat before. Right, so who should our first target be? That last attempt went poorly, but why? Mr. Sparkles is still low. I think Zodja has got to be the first target, and we just stay away from air. I think that's the way we got to do this. Starting with Axe, and then that. Look at that. Look at that damage air does. My god, I need to dodge her. If this goes badly again next time on the engage, we have to dodge. Like, look at this. If we use as much of our dodge rolls as possible, don't forget we do get regeneration from it as well. Okay, more blinds. Stay away from air. Zodja hurts as well, but not too bad. This is a scary place because the longer I stay back here, air's still I'm shooting me. Incarnate. Look at all that damage she just did. She just ripped through our shroud. If I can break combat now while Kaith stays alive in there, we could re-engage. Let's try this. This will be really cheeky if this works. If I can break combat. Yes, I did. I did. I did. Oh, no, no, no. Now I'm back in because the, the minions. All right. We're good. We're good. We're good. Thing is, air is so dangerous. Blinds. All right. We got to kill Zodja and again, and not. Oh, God. Air is still there. Air, go away. Freaking Norn. They're too strong, man. All right. Good, good, good. Take her out. And then when foul lane appears, we got to break the bar. We don't have the golem. How can you destroy All right. Mm, there's the knockback. There, there's foul lane. There's foul lane. Okay. Gotta pressure her. Maybe we can't. It said she's immu immune there. Maybe we just gotta do damage to her. Oh, this is so bad, though. This is so bad. Ritlock and Logan are just so nasty as frontliners. All right, guys. Uh, I'm here with post commentary now. So you've seen enough footage now to see the struggles with the fight. Every time we kill a member of Destiny's Edge, Foul Lane comes to the field and resurrects that member. So, we kind of have a problem in that, basically, Caraflower doesn't quite have the damage. Which is interesting, because previously when I've played this, I've just... When Foul Lane's come down, she's just instantly been cleaved out, and the fight's kind of over. I forgive you all. All but Kate. It's her fault. Your time has come again, Lost Soul. So, uh, a few things happen now. Basically, I spent about 40 minutes just grinding back and forth on this. But here you can see Ritlock on the ground, and he's pulsing. He died so far away from Foul Lane here that he's going to get rezzed by Foul Lane without Foul Lane even having to come to the field. So, that didn't quite work for me. But, uh, here are the footage you can currently see. I'm trying to kill one member of Destiny's Edge away from the others, then charge in. But it doesn't matter, because Ritlock will res back in the passage, they'll all charge through, and it's just kind of messy. So, I'll cut ahead now to the original commentary at the end of this huge, long, grinding fight. This is what happened. Which is- No, 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 I didn't want to use that. Oh, crap. Okay, weakness, weakness, weakness. We got weakness. We got blind. She's getting low. Ritlock's back up. That's fine. Oh, good. We have blinds on the entire group. That's perfect. All of the... <gasps> oh, no! Do we rally? Do we rally? Caraflower! Oh, uh, come on! Okay, we do rally. All right, bailing. Bailing and shroud. Bailing. So, as you can see, they even managed to get us down, uh, and we got a lucky rally. So, this was not going well for me. So, the biggest problem with the fight is to do with foul lane again. Which is that she has a break bar, suggesting you should be able to interrupt her when she's resurrecting. But whenever I threw a daze or a blowout or a fear or something on her, the break bar wouldn't really take any damage. Suggesting that it's not about interrupting Foul Lane, but instead about killing her. But the problem with killing Foul Lane is that she has tons of health. And is only on the board for a short while, because once the res is finished, she teleports away again. And if you score the kill really far away, such as in this passage you're looking at, she doesn't appear at all. So, I was stuck here for a while thinking, how exactly do I get through this, trying different methods. Uh, one of my theories was that I could change my skills, and I did a little bit of build craft. I'll cut back to the original commentary so you can see this as well, which turned out to be a great idea. So, instead of vampiric rituals here with the well... 
I'm going to go Transfusion, which is the one that heals all of our minions. This will make, hopefully, our minions re not as sustainy as giving them protection and, and the extra life still or whatever. But this should still be pretty good. Okay, that. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to get a new type of skill altogether, which are Corruptions. So Corruptions I will talk about in a later video at a later time. I didn't really want to do this already. But basically, a Corruption skill inflicts conditions on ourselves to cast. So we sacrifice some part of ourselves to be able to enact it. And I'm going to get the very first corruption in the game. It's called Corrosive Poison Field, which is weaken yourself and envelop the target area in a noxious cloud that poisons foes and leaves them weakened. So this is weakness, which reduces the damage we take. But also, check this out. Projectiles that pass through the field are destroyed. So what this cloud means is as long as we have this cloud up and it lasts for eight seconds, no projectiles can hit us. So the Well of Darkness would blind one of Air's attacks, and then her later ones would be fine. Like, if she did the shotgun, the Well of Darkness will completely destroy all of them. So, this is going to be better for anti-Air and anti-Zodger, okay? And we, we get a little bit of the Well's worth by, he, uh, uh, by bringing Transfusion back on our Grandmaster. So, that is what I'm hoping we can do now. Um, and we will just have to see how it goes. We lost all of our charges as well when we went down. Still, the question is who to target first. I think I will go for air, and I'm going to open up with the corrosive poison cloud and just try to beat her up while she's in it. Okay? I'm going to go heavy on her. Ready? So let's do it. We're going to dodge her first attack, though, whatever that is. It's that. So now cloud goes down, and we're just going to do as much damage as possible because we are invulnerable to her for these seconds. So, that was some pretty good build craft, and the poison cloud did help me survive a lot longer. But, needless to say, we still didn't have the pressure. How can I stop Foul Lane from rezzing when I can't break her break bar and I can't kill her because she has too much health and gets all of her health back every time she leaves again, by the way. Like, she'll come down at 100, we'll do 10% while she's rezzing, then she'll go up and come back down at 100. So how do you deal with it? Well, that continued to be the problem that eluded me for a long time after even equipping the Poison Cloud. Now, sometimes you can get Foul Lane to trigger a little bit of audio, this one here. Well, that was naughty of you. Don't you want your friends to keep playing? But that doesn't really mean anything. So how does the puzzle work? Well, the answer came shortly after all of this, when I had Logan dead, as you can see here. And while he's dead, I kill Ritlock too. Now watch Foul Lane very closely. I don't have an I forgive you. All but Kate. Now, what happened there is Foul Lane cancelled her resurrection on Logan in order to instead pick up the more recently deceased Ritlock, and Logan's body disappears completely and doesn't come back. And so that is the solution to the puzzle. Thing is, I missed all of this, and I didn't realize why, for a long time afterwards, uh, Logan had just disappeared. I thought it could have been a bug or something and didn't even know whether to commentate on it. But uh, yes, that is the way that you deal with the fight. You have to stagger the kills, but need to score another one while foul lane's rezzing. This is also why when you have a high damage player or team, this encounter goes so fast in the blink of an eye because you kill everyone all at once together. Foul lane comes down to try and res the first and then gets cancelled, 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 and then it's done, right? With foul lane potentially even dying at the same time. It's only when you slow things down, you get to look at these mechanics that were designed back in 2012. And most players, including myself, have forgotten about or don't even know. So that's the fight, really. I can cut out a huge amount of just grinding away on this. Later, the stars align and I get another kill like that. And we manage to work our way through it. It's a bit weird. There are some other strange aspects of it. Like, for example, Garm is Air's pet and Foul Lane will never res. I think Air is supposed to res Garm on her own, but she doesn't. She never uses the skill. Uh, similar with Zodger and Mr. Sparkles, except Zodger actually will res Mr. Sparkles. But Foul Lane never does. And that's about it. Aside from me accidentally bugging Kate's position a million miles away during all my attempts, I don't think there's much more to note. Except, well, maybe the air is a freaking badass and not to be messed with. End the charade now, Fallon. But dear Hamad, 
We used to enjoy our little games of make-believe. I'm done with your games, and I'm finished with you. I am not your dear heart. We shall see, dear heart. We shall see. <laughs> oh my god! We'll go down in history. Damn her. Damn me for my weakness. Oh my god. Woo! All right. So hopefully in the post commentary I've already described exactly what was going on there. What the hell? What a freaking boss fight. My god, I actually learned more about that boss fight here playing this with you guys than I knew going into it. Every other time I've played I've just annihilated it. In fact, Foulane, you saw how she was hostile there at the end? Uh, she's so squishy, you you can usually kill her, even solo, before that dialogue ends. Um, wow. Oh my god, we, 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 we got it though. So Kate says, I have failed to kill Foulane, but I have broken her power. It feels sufficient. Are you alright? I think I'm alright. Foulane's a manipulator, and I almost fell into her trap. I almost despaired. I almost gave up. Thank you for helping me. You and me both, Kaif. I almost despaired and gave up as well. We came so close to dying twice there. It's insane. Oh, all right. So, uh, level uh, 62 acquired. Thank you. We have been spammed with so much stuff because dungeons are oh so rewarding. Am I right, guys? Um, I guess I, I can't even deposit anything. We'll get rid of this bundle of seeds. I guess I got an extra one from before. And, uh, wow, Jesus. Okay, so there you go. That's TA finished. It almost feels surreal. And if we walk over here now, um, what you will see is, uh, the ledge that she was probably standing on before. This is where Logan ran off. Like, literally, Logan ran off over here. And then when we come down, this is where Ritlock ran off just a little bit over here as well. Uh, that's where we killed that spider oh so long ago. Dungeon 3 complete. Congratulations. We have driven Foulane from Twilight Arbor. We do get a mail uh, from our Herald who says this. I've heard that Foulane has been dri driven from Twilight Arbor, but that in her absence... Three Nightmare Court supporters have stormed the forest, seeking to gain control of a secret lying somewhere among the trees. I have no idea what the secret might be, but it appears to be worth killing over. I'm getting reports that terrified Silvari are streaming out of the arbor with stories of bloodshed and horror. There's a handful of Silvari who are caring for the refugees, dislodged by the Nightmare Court invasion, but something more must be done. I already volunteered your assistance, so go be a hero and end this brutality. Safe travels, your herald. So, in Guild Wars 2, when you complete a story dungeon, a new version of it unlocks. I've talked about many times, but now we will finally show off called Explorable Mode. So here, what, uh, the description has changed now. It says, the Wild Hunt Valiants are protecting a Silvari refugee camp in Twilight Arbor from the horrors that lie deeper in the forest. And now when we click enter Explorable Mode, you'll see that the uh, entire thing changes. And we have alternate stuff to go for. So you'll notice that the Lion Guard are here. You'll notice that Kaith's over there. Uh, and there's several things. Now, it would be a very, 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 very long series to cover all of this. Maybe I'll do a dedicated end game series one day. But I did want to show you that things change basically when you come back inside. And we can explore different areas. Now, your reward for doing explorable versions of the dungeons is different currencies based on the dungeon we're talking about. So when I go to my inventory, you'll see down here we have the wallet. I've shown this off before. So the wallet shows very... The inventory shows items you earn. The wallet shows currencies. So gems for the gem store. Coins as gold we get. Karma, spirit shards. I actually haven't talked about spirit shards yet, but karma. We've talked about these. Now we can filter these to all different kinds of ones that exist all, all across Guild Wars 2. And here is one called dungeon currencies. So these are all the different dungeons of the game. You can get Ascalonian Tears from the first one. Seals of Beetle Ton from Beetle Ton Manor. And Deadly Bloons here in Twilight Arbor. In fact, if we click it, we actually get a little bit more lore as well. The Nightmare Court are Silvari that turned their backs on the Pale Tree and sought their own cruel purposes in life. Their leader, Grand Duchess Foulane, makes her lair here in the Twilight Arbor, surrounded by loyal minions. So you get that. Uh, but you might be wondering, okay, so WP, you're telling me you play the dungeons, you complete the explorable paths, you get these things called dungeon currencies. What do you spend them on? Well all kinds of stuff. Potions, sigils, runes, an assortment of goods like that. But also, every single one of the dungeons in the game 
has its own unique weapon set and armor set. And now that we've been to the Twilight Arbor for tons of currencies, but because I'm a nerd, I've already unlocked everything. So because we have completed Twilight Arbor, Caraflower is going to get a new outfit. Voila. So this is the nightmare armor for completing this dungeon. If this was right back when Guild Wars 2 first came out, seeing a player in a full set of this armor would have been very impressive because the explorable dungeons are really hard and it takes a lot of currency to get them. So here you go. Uh, and this is how we look. We even have the nightmare weapons from the same dungeon. So this is the axe, the dagger, and then another dagger and the Warhorn in our offhand there. And so, yeah, uh, our spoils from helping out Kaith there make us look like this, a complete badass. And with all of that said and done, it's time to go meet with Tegwin and Karis to uh, deal with Ore on our own. It seems Destiny's Edge are still having a ton of problems. What a shame. So we're going to go find Karis. That is south of Lion's Arch in Blood Tide Coast, as now the game moves very much into the later stages. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I, I hope to see you next time for a lot more fun, cool stuff. Ever wonder what we're doing here? Not really. I follow Ventari's teachings, and all I have known is death. Life harbors evil, and where it goes, I conquer it. More refugees. If this keeps up, I think we'll have to move into the mists. I'm sure the dragons would love you.